Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to paint leaves. And the leaves we're going to paint today are from the Agapanthus plant, also known as the Lily of the Nile. And this is a botanical painting that I did recently. And these are great leaves to start out with if you're a beginner, because they are just sort of the parallel lily style leaf, so there's not a ton of detail. Um, they're just like the long leaves that you would see on a lot of lilies, daffodils have them as well. So I'm just going to show you how I paint the leaves specifically. You'll see the whole painting during the tutorial, but we're, we're just going to focus right on the leaves for this video. So if you're interested in learning how I do that, then keep on watching. Okay, for this video, we have already started the painting. So I'm showing you on this one how to do the leaves. And this is a great video for people that are just starting out with watercolor because we're just doing basic parallel leaves. And we're starting with a wet on wet wash. And this is a great way to practice just dropping in different tones and um, shades of green. So, as always with my botanical paintings I like to use at least three different colors for the leaves and then for the flowers so I have a medium a dark and a light green for these agapanthus leaves you can see that I just dropped some of that darker color into the lighter wash and so when you're starting out one of the biggest things to figure out is timing of how wet your paper is, when to add paint, when not to add paint, if it's dried too much. And so if you're really fresh and beginning, I would just be patient with yourself and paint a whole bunch of these leaves to practice. Um, so the first step there is I've laid down some of the water wash. You can see it because it's kind of tinted green, which is fine. It's easier for the video. Then I've just added the light green and now I'm adding the dark green. And I'm not painting, as I've said before, I'm really just tapping the brush to the paper and dropping color in and letting it spread out on its own. Now I am doing the same thing here. This is a, a good angle to see how wet the paper is. You can see I'm making sure the area is fully covered. It's not puddled um, or really really wet but it's evenly covered and all of the paper is glistening so there's a certain type of sheen that is um, indicative of when the watercolor paper and water are ideal for starting to paint so I like to think of it as creating the clean water wash and then just waiting a couple seconds and then start dropping your color in like I am now this is a lighter green. I believe I've used some olive green and um, green gold and sap green, but you can use whatever colors you have. Doesn't have to be artist quality paint. I do use artist quality paint because it is um, really nice to use. Um, but I do also have a palette from Munyo, I believe. It's like a travel palette and it's not quite artist quality paint, but still really nice paint. I also have one from Sakura. The Koi palette is also a really good one if you're starting out. Now you can see I've just dropped in some darker color there and I'm just evening it out a bit, making sure that I do have sort of a lighter edge and a darker edge on these leaves. As you can see, you want to leave light shining through on these paintings you don't really want to paint every bit in so the water as I drop it in kind of spreads out but I'm adding a lot less paint than you'd think you would need that being said I am making sure that the paint concentration mixed up in my palette is nice and strong because you want to be able to create this painting with using as little um, number of layers and washes as possible. I like to do one wet on wet wash and then I do some line detailing and then I 
sort of do some smaller graded washes to build up darker areas of colors, kind of my three-step method of painting. I still haven't made a video on that. I am going to definitely make a video explaining my, my system I've sort of devised for how I approach botanical painting and it really helps me be less intimidated when I approach new plants and projects because it can be really intimidating to know where to start. And you can see here as I've been painting I have kind of been using my brush to guide along to make sure that I'm lining up my edges where this leaf has overlaps so that's one thing that definitely detracts from the painting is that your leaves don't line up after another leaf is overlapping so do be mindful of that here is another fresh leaf so you can see here i did not cover all of that pa paint or sorry paper with paint um i left a bunch of white showing through and I intend to keep that light shining through and then I'm dropping darker paint um, into the areas that already have paint on them. I think that is probably one of the number one mistakes as a beginner is overpainting, just thinking you need to paint everything and then it becomes dark and muddy, um, there's no highlights and it's hard in watercolor to retrieve highlights um, if you really overpainted it and it's dried you can certainly use a draw, uh, mop brush and kind of while it's still wet mop out some color with a clean damp brush um, but the less fiddling around you need to do the better So I almost have all my leaves painted in now and I'm just returning back to a darker area where this leaf is folded over and so this underside would be in shadow. So I am using a darker green for that right away because it's going to be one of the darkest areas on the leaves. Now that all the leaves have been painted in with their first layers, I am starting with some detailing and I'm just taking a darker mid-green using the tip of my brush with the light pressure on the brush or up on its point and I'm doing a mid-rib or center vein on all the leaves and this really helps kind of bring the painting to life and show you the perspective of the leaves and I am letting my brush skip along a little bit just doesn't need to be a full solid line on every leaf broken lines are kind of good I don't like to paint in every single detail because when you look at a plant in real life you don't see every single detail some are in shadow some are in light others are too far away so less is more I think um and so I'm just turning the painting upside down right now. Sometimes it's easier to drag the brush towards you when you're trying to do a nice steady line. And now I've cleaned out my brush and I am just kind of using some clean water to go over a few of the veins that were a little thicker than I wanted and it also just kind of blurs and softens them up a little bit. So again, not every spot on the leaf needs to be hard detail. Thank you. 
thank you so much for watching this video guys if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel you can hit the bell icon beside subscribe to get a notification when i post a new video